Hello, hello, hello. Live from New York City. It's your girl, Diva Divine Light. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like button on your way in. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell on the side. Put it on all. You can get all my uploads as I upload them. And we are here for fun, talk, listening, and learning. Love and peace. May you all be blessed. And make sure to put your comments below in the video and in the comment box. And don't forget to share, share, share. Enjoy the show. by the best as one of the host, sometime co-host, but one of the co-founders of the new Black Leadership Coalition. I am joined here this evening by uh, really two of the founders of the new Black Leadership, uh, Minister Michael Muhammad and Sister Kim Delaney, Professor Dr. Kim Delaney, she's an author as well. Uh, Robert Kelly, known as R. Kelly, and our sister here, Dr. Professor Kim Delaney, um, author, she has a um, deep, deep, um, I would say it would probably be a revelation to some of the people about your relationship with him and your perspective with him uh, about him as a professor, author, and a female. And Minister Mike as a, a practitioner, minister, and et cetera. But I, my, my, I, I want to say this, and then you all could go and jump right in. I want to... Um, give a really brief um, commentary on this that I wasn't really prepared for. That's my telephone going off. But I wasn't. But as I say, you know, you have to be thankful to God to kind of guide you and you hope that he guides you because it's a very serious mm -hmm. conversation. So, you know, he or she that has not sinned, let him cast the first stone. Want that to be for the record as we go down this road. You know, I think Brother Farrakhan, the Honorable Brother Farrakhan, for a perspective of Scientology called Dianetics, and there's a part called auditing, auditing. And I'm going to talk about what that means. 
days when we look at the darkness of the black community all the way back to slavery. Because I, I cannot talk about R. Kelly without giving it the context of all that happens to black people and even his sick behind and deal with it from a perspective of historical abuse and the, and the trauma that Minister Michael is very uh, 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 aware of when it comes to us as a people and our sickness. And but the atonement piece that Brother Farrakhan, you dig, had brought to us was for a reason. We we all as black people just overlooked that. He didn't get no help and hell, we didn't get any or some of us tried our best to fix certain things that were wrong in our lives. And I'm saying that because the big guns already then bombed this brother. Now the little guns are coming out. I don't know if it's even necessary for the little guns because the big guns is pretty much putting him to rest. If that is the goal and objective of why we talking about him, why they talking about. So there's a whole lot to talk about. And it ain't just him and his sickness and madness. But it's us as a black community, and then it's us sometimes hypocritical mm. as we contradict mm. ourselves and act as though we ain't got no darkness in our damn life. Yay, sick, but not alone. And so when you deal with this, you got to really try to be guided because ain't none of us sitting here at, without any fault, without any sin, without any shortcomings. Mm. Not to that level, but damn. What is it that we want? Mm. I saw some of it. And my heart goes out to anybody that's been abused or falsely accused or misused. Mm. But let's give it, if it's some balance that could be given to it, I like to hear it, but I want to hear your perspective, Sister Kim, because it's quite interesting mm -hmm. that you had a relationship with this brother. Mm -hmm. And you know him, you know him mm -hmm. better than I do. I've never met him. Minister Michael, you know him mm -hmm. to some degree because you worked with him or worked around him. Let's talk about it. Because I'm not going to sugarcoat the way I see the world. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, when people talk about Ed Burke and they talk about Tony Pretwinkle or they talk about who been in the bed with him and they didn't say anything about this cat for years. Now everybody want to send the money back. See, we so quick to throw everybody under the damn bus. The white man is something when it comes to us. And we are even worse when it comes to each other and how we deal with family matters. Damn, when you need some help, get some. Now, if you ignore it and you still continue on with that foolishness, then, hey, man, the chips fall where they may. But anyway, good evening. <laughs> good evening. And uh, we want to just uh welcome everybody back to the show um we've been off for a few weeks and we were blessed to see the turn of a new calendar year that's 2019. all it was um but we have to keep it in perspective because we're all on god's time that's right and so having said that i just want to make a quick statement uh and then i want to defer to dr delaney uh, I did have some exposure to Brother uh, uh, Kelly, R. Kelly, uh, some years ago in a business a kind of uh, dealing with my brother. And so I got a chance to observe him up close a little bit. Uh, and so I, I don't want to go into that. What I want to do is just give something that will help hopefully give some context to in, give some enrichment to whatever uh, our sister has to share with us because she's really qualified to speak on the brother 
uh, on a personal level. But as I was listening to some of the comments early this morning, I, I listened to Steve Harvey. I listened to um, to um, oh, I can't think of my brother's name that just moved here from New York. That's on the radio. I listened to uh, GCI and 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 Kendra G and and the other brothers on there with her. And uh, everybody has passed the judgment on the brother. And I will say as a father of daughters, that is one perspective that uh, I, I'm, I'm going to save for later. But it made me think as I was listening to the comments and even reading some of the comments on social media about Solomon. King Solomon in the from scripture. Bible and Holy Quran. And Solomon is vilified even by Christian pastors, some mm -hmm. of them, some uh, so called Christian the theologians, and some uh, historians vilify Solomon because of his alleged sexual life. Mm -hmm. Solomon was reported to have taken 700 wives. And 300 concubines, 700 wives, 300 concubines. Now, without going into it, uh, of course, there's a debate of, about the historical veracity of that. But nevertheless, even in the lives of the prophets, if you are a believer in Scripture, uh, even in the lives of of most of our icons and our heroes, if you were granted access to their private apartments, you would probably hear conversations and be exposed to certain uh, relationship types and structures and behaviors that may put you off if you have a simple understanding of human relationship and human nature. Sex is probably uh, rival by food is the probably the two greatest physical drives we have in the body. And Satan has constructed a society that allows us to feed our appetites to the point that our appetites begin to rule us. Satan has created an environment where he knows how to take our appetites and destroy us. And so we have to look at ourselves as a human family. And how we are socialized as human beings in how we relate to our sexual desires and our sexual appetites. And very few of us can say that we have managed our sexual proclivities and appetites in a completely clean and righteous way. So. When we judge somebody, R. Kelly or Hugh Hefner or Wilt Chamberlain or Bill Clinton or whoever you want to name that had a sexual ap uh, episode in the media, when we judge them, we first must temper our judgment by looking at ourselves. And so finally, there's an aspect to this conversation that I don't think we're prepared to have. Hmm. And I don't know if we'll get there tonight. So I'm not going to go there. I want to defer to you, Dr. Delaney, because you have a perspective on Brother Robert that is more personable. It's It's more protracted it's more and you have more data and information than those of us looking on the outside in or those of us who had a few moments around the brother you have a more 
your um, body of information is more informed mm -hmm. than most. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so speak uh, into the mic uh, so we can hear you. Okay. So let me say that um, I I don't have uh, any new revelations or any new something strong. Uh, I, I I got some strong opinions because I watched the whole thing. Um, you know, all six, I watched that because this is the work I do. So I can't, this is what I do, you know, uh, study culture and media, pop culture and all of that and identity construction. So I have to watch it. You know, I can't turn it off when it's uh, a friend of mine. You said, Greg, um, that I had a relationship. I have a relationship with Robert. He's one of my best friends for almost 30 years. And so uh, I don't understand friendship like most people people evidently understand friendship where you where I'm somebody's friend and I enjoy all of the, the all of their uptime and then their downtime I dismiss them that's not how I understand friendship that's not how I understand family so for me um I can't really I mean I have a different perspective surely mm -hmm. I have a different perspective so everybody's like throw them in the trash and get away from them you know, throw him in the trash, get away from him, each kill itself, all this. Uh I don't I don't feel that way. You know, I I I definitely absolutely and always have been able to separate not separate, but to understand human nature. This is why I teach in prisons. I act I specifically asked for division ten where there were murderers, where people have said, Oh, your sin is too great, I don't want to deal with you. I asked to go in to talk to talk to those guys because that's how I understand my mission in life is to make people better, try to pull the best out of people. That's why I teach these people who were discarded. That's why they were so happy to have me there because I see them. I see them beyond the action that they took that, that's, that's bad. I don't excuse the action. I don't expect the people they murdered to come in there with me to teach them. I don't. They the, Those people should understand them in the way that they understand them but I understand them differently I see the humanity in them a friend of mine was saying like you know one thing I'm I'm tired of and I don't want people to do is to try to make me see no humanity in R. Kelly and if anybody and people are talking and they're saying that everybody you know people have comments about other people who are in the video she said, I don't care what anybody did in the video. Somebody in the video could have killed. If, if you tell me a couple of them murdered people, then it's because of him. And I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. It is particularly um, it is particularly painful to watch because it, it was all kind of predictable, right? So Rob, for me, I've never experienced Rob in, in, a, never, in, in, a, in a violent way. So me watching that, I promise I was amazed. Like, what the fuck is this? What is this? Like, I'm watching it like, what? what is this? What are they talking about? I don't know Rob in a violent way. I know Rob to be controlling of his environment. That's, what, that's who he is. That's what he is. He's not the only one. Every famous person I know who runs a whole industry, they're like that. They're very controlling. Like, I didn't know him to be controlling to the extent that I heard about in those videos. So... In essence, I, I I was introduced to R. Kelly in that way. That's not that's not Robert as I know him. I, I don't know him like that. I do know that, like I said, that he's controlling. I've know over the years of all of the things he did. I I never I never I never imagined Robert to be a violent person, like beat somebody and stuff like that. That was shocking. I know Robert has uh, sexual problems. Not, not sexual problems. Let me say. What, what, I don't even know how to categorize it. I know that Rob has he's has Wilt Chamberlain type of numbers when it comes to winter, women. He's just they just he just rolls them through. You know, women. He's a star. He has a whole rock star thing rolling through. I know he has that. I know of the other stuff that I've read over the years for sure, in the newspapers and things like that. When I watch the documentary, I know Sparkle. I know Drea. I've met both of them over the years, knew them, you know, back in the day. I've never seen any of those other women. I've, I've never seen them, but clearly they know them. So what I'm saying is I know Robert from a friend's perspective. That's where I know him from. The other R. Kelly stuff, I, I really, I mean, you know, I, I don't speak to that because I don't know that. I only know what I see in the media about that. So my response to that documentary when I saw it. First of all, let me say, I was contacted to be in a documentary. 
they contacted me when they were putting the documentary together. They asked me would I be in the in the thing. Uh, when I first got the call, I said, "Well, have you asked him? Is it about him?" Because I didn't know it was a. It, it wasn't called Surviving R. Kelly. They just said it's a documentary about R. Kelly, his life. We want to cover the full realm of his life. And I and and we heard your name several times from several people that you were his best friend or whatever. Then they they I said, "Oh wow." Well, I'm supposed to talk to him later today. Have you asked him? And then they said, well, not yet. Then I'm saying, but why, why are you calling me first? It seemed like you would ask him first. Instantly, I know what kind of thing it is if you haven't asked him and it's about him. And then they said, well, not yet. Do you plan to? Well, you should, you know. Uh, and then I said, well, you know, I don't talk about Robert's l private life publicly. Because that's his life. Let me ask him if he's okay with me talking about his life, and I'll let you know. That's what I said to the people. I didn't ask him. Later, the the, the people, uh, they I, I avoided them, didn't call me back, didn't call me. The one girl was young who had called me, younger. Then they had another, she was Mama Kim, Mama this, and I'm like, okay. They they heard, they read something about me, so they tried to finagle me in. Then they had somebody call me back who addressed me as Dr. Delaney. Blah blah blah. She made you know. Well, would you like to be participate? Well, what we want to do is full coverage, complete understanding of who he is. I said I'm not interested in being in in anything that's um, not productive, not looking for a solution to something, or that's smashing. She said, Oh no, we're going to cover the full of his life. So they came to Chicago. So I said, then I said yes, I would do it because she said it's going to cover it full. They came to Chicago. I was scheduled to meet them. Uh, that day, you know, they sent me a text about lunch and something like that. But one of what made me, first of all, I asked a bunch of people that I respect, and they all said that I should not do it because it, whatever I say, will be twisted, and it's not going to serve a greater purpose. This was every these very important people I asked who said that whatever I say, that's what the media does. It's going to be twisted, and it won't have the effect of that I desire. It won't help anybody. That's what everybody said except for one person. Then the lady called me and she said, yeah, can we get copies of your book? She said, you know, this you should, you know, really engage because this will increase the sales of your books. Mm. And that's that then that away with me. So on the day that was the day before on the day of I was scheduled to go and I, I, I felt some kind of way about it. So I sent him a text message and said that I wasn't going to participate. And so I I watched it it was more of a to, for me it was more of a political socio-political kind of documentary at more than it was just straight factual because when i looked at the music and the graphics it was a straight up horror film man it was a horror film and it was a well done horror film I want, like if I'm trying to scare the shit out of somebody <laughs> that's what it was i i, I it, it, it it spooked me you know i i i uh, the night, the last episode, when I, I mean, I cried for hours. I'm like, what the, what was that? I text the lady that I know that I'm that I'm in contact with, who started the mute R. Kelly thing. I'm, I, we, she and I talk occasionally. She, you know, we plan to have a conversation one day and talk about some things on camera to see. Because I said, what, what you trying to do? What's productive out of this? We plan to have a conversation. Well, so I text her. About one something in the morning, I said, "Well, what? I don't know what that was that I just watched, you know, because that's not that's not that's not who I know. So this is all new for me. It was very emotional, and like I say, it was a it was a spook thing. It's like, man, wow, the, the flaming things and the dun 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 music, all of this, and so it was very believable for me. And that night, it was a it was a hard thing for me. And all, what I got out of it um, for that night was that I'm gonna talk to Robert to convince Robert to make these people go home. This is not my first time before somebody said something. I said, man, put put send these people home. I don't care if they want to stay here. What I know for a fact is he don't hold. You know, this is what makes it so hard. This is a touchy subject because women, I'm a, I'm a woman. My daughter is 21. This is this is this is what I fight for. But it's a touchy subject because I would like just lay the truth out and let the truth deal. Then then people don't have to grapple so much with 
inconsistencies, right? So if you if if, if you watching all these other things, what happens is you get to see that it's too much, like you you, you it's too extra. So when I'm watching the news and the news says like he's you know and he had a coat and he holding people captive, I'm like we well, ain't holding nobody captive. I just seen them people. I was just down at the studio. Everybody, it's a party. Everybody's laughing and joking and funning. Everybody. This is this is I, I, this is this is captive. This is captivity. I left out the door. The doors was open. What? So when they were first came out with that, that he's holding people prison. What? That's not true. Then it makes the whole thing seem kind of weird. Like it. So you can't really get to the truth. When I watched the documentary, it gave me different facts that I that I didn't know. The media first. The first facts I was given from the media, I knew those to be not true. He's not holding people captive. It's not what he does. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, that's not there. I've been there when other people are there and he's not even there and the door is open. So we could all leave. That's not, that, I mean, that's like I left and came in and left out. If everybody can leave. So this is, this is not a real thing, but so I have a problem with it being painted like the big boogeyman, the big, you know, the big monster boogeyman. This is, this is what I know of Robert that's, problematic is the same thing that's problematic in pop culture and it's not in, in this whole industry it's not my way of life i don't do threesomes i don't do groupsomes i don't do um groupie i don't do that that's it's not my way but there are a whole host of people who do and it's legal it's legal we people could disagree with it, but that's legal. That's what people do. That's what they do. You know, I've been knowing Robert for almost 30 years. My son is 29. I met Robert when my son was one, a toddler. I've been in space with Robert with people holding the car door, chasing the cars. You know, I've been in space with Robert. We, sit, we had a party and somebody come over and take their dress off butt naked and pour a drink down their back and make their butt clap in front of our table. Just come over there. I've been expect Rob lives in a different culture than me. <laughs> he lives in a different world. It's very weird. It's a weird world, but it's a real world, right? And it, it cracks me up how what we do is apply our standards to his world. It cracks me up people looking at, the, at, 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 at marriage and then Drea's on there and she's talking about, you know, you know, I, I was there when Rob met Drea. So Drea's on there and she's talking and she's saying, you know, in my marriage, marriage, I'm thinking that's not a proper image that people are applying to that marriage. That was not a traditional marriage. That wasn't that. <laughs> so when people think of their marriage and my husband better be here by eight and he did, that's not the kind of marriage she had. That's not, I mean, I'm not going to talk about that man's business, but that's, but anybody who knows Robert and knows her and knows the situation knows that's not the marriage she had. That's not, that's not, he didn't have that a traditional kind of marriage like that. Robert, you know, he, he's married to music. He was married to Drea too, but he's, he, Robert lives in the studio. He's in the studio all the time. He, Robert, I don't know. It's just, it's a hard thing. I, I feel bad for anybody that is, what the, what the documentary did for me is anybody that's physically assaulted, I feel bad for anybody. I don't like bullying. I don't like bullying in any way at all. So that whole aspect of bullying, that whole uh, that that was shown in that film, that whole as aspect of bullying, this whole excuse me, this whole thing about um, right at the border, girls, you know, like right at the age limit thing. I think that's that's for me that's problematic. That's problematic again. I found it interesting. I was watching, when I was watching it, one part, the girl, I think her name, Asante, or Asante, or something like that. She's one of the, she was a, one of the older women who met him older. And she said, at one point, they said something. She said, well, Robert, she, no, she said, well, R. Kelly likes girls, something. She said, R. Kelly likes girls he could control. He doesn't care what age you, he doesn't care. You could be 40, you know, or 18. He likes people he can control. And it's interesting that she would say that. And then the documentary had majority close younger girls. And then had the girl, the, the, the two, two ladies who were older, Andrea who was older, but then had young. And I was thinking out of, you know, but 
you know, I guess they wanted to bring out who who the issues is. But let me say this. Let me say this. I'm not. I don't make no excuses for uh, for Rob's behavior. I don't. I don't. First of all, I don't know what's true and what's not of Rob's behavior. I tend to believe something that I hear over and over and over. I tend to be, I, I tend to believe it. That's my. That's that's what. That's my personal thing, but that shouldn't be equated to anything I know about Rob because I don't know any of that of Rob. I've never seen Rob be. I, I was, you know, I was just around Rob the other day, right? My, my sister and I just brought the New Year in with Rob. We was with Rob down there at a the party. Everybody was laughing, fun, and having fun, laughing, cracking up. So, I mean, and just having fun. I don't know that part of Robert. I don't know. Let me let me ask you. And I, I know Minister Mike, you had something you was going. You want to go ahead because it was just something. I was just again. Gonna, let me say though, I'm not saying this, I'm no, not saying nothing about truth. No, I'm no, saying no. I, that's not the way no, I know. No, I no, hear no. you. Let's, I hear you loud, mm -hmm. and I hear you clear, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I hear you uh, not struggling, but trying to make sense out of this yeah, in this pain. Is, yeah, in pain because I hear it. And 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 it's not orchestrated. Mm -hmm. There's not a slicing conversation mm -hmm. where we had you on television, right? And we were interviewing you. We wouldn't hear right. this whole that's why I, conversation that's why I didn't do it. That's right. because it would only be enough mm -hmm. to wet mm -hmm. the um, interests mm -hmm. of. Look, we would be a fool, and I think I heard you say, but. I, I, and I want to come back to what what's the name of your book that you wrote yeah. as it relates to R. Kelly? Yeah, I, I don't want to I don't want to appear to be promoting the book. But you so ain't promoting the book. I just wrote a book some years ago, uh, you know, and 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 to be honest, when I wrote the book, it was before major major prop because my book was okay. an attempt to save Rob by telling the name of the book was Starstruck, and I was saying people are starstruck. Y'all quit ruining them. These people, I, I knew y'all gonna ruin this dude. He's a good dude. He's going to be ruined by people just treating him like he's a god. Calm down, son. That's why I wrote Starstruck. Calm down. Starstruck was is no. It's, it's a Romana clay. Well, a Romana clay is a is a fictionalized account of a true story. But so I wanted to deal with what the media was saying, where everybody was like, "Oh no, there's no way for that." So I just kind of wrote a story around what was in the media, right? To say kind of what if, right? Put put the what ifs because what I know is. That this is this what I study, you know, identity construction. This is what I study. Study people, human beings. And what I know is if you if you 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 can ruin the people. And this is what's so hurtful for me, Greg, is that what happens is all the while, just like if I'm talking to you and I'm saying, Greg, don't do that. that no, Greg, or then he then the people are saying, No, but I love you. Then he's like, No, but they love me. This is this is good. This man, and I'm saying, No, that's not that's not good. That's like I don't care what they're telling you, and I don't care what this is, you know. And that's that's to me. Did you ever go? Have you ever had a conversation with him mm -hmm. in terms of? It's one thing to tell the people don't be starstruck, mm -hmm. but you didn't, as you are saying now, you didn't know that any of this was I know going the on. People, not all the, all the know, weird stuff that's in that yeah, thing. You no, know what? And and I, I, I think about Michael Jackson, and I think mm -hmm. about. All the stuff that happened to Michael, mm -hmm. et cetera. And then some people came back and recanted their mm -hmm. story. Yeah. But I watched the way all mm -hmm. of this stuff goes down, right? And Minister Michael, thank you for mentioning in the same breath that you mentioned R. Kelly. You mentioned you have It's almost like you call some people the mobsters. You call some game bangers and mm -hmm. thugs. But we got to be real, real careful with not contributing to any side, more so the side of what is the truth, and even what we heard, we in pain and we see mm -hmm. that the brother, uh, based on what we heard mm -hmm. and saw, the word now is the brother was a monster. The brother was sick. The brother was out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, R. Kelly did this, did that. The babies were totally under age, mm -hmm. et cetera. One says she was 17 and she was there with one that was four. She didn't know 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrea, the girl, she was on YouTube the other day singing, that's my baby's daddy, mm-hmm. and stepping in the name of love. But yet everybody showed this emotion, and I get it, you dig, because you don't know how people have to hold on to this and hold on to that. And we all got stuff that have happened to us in our past mm-hmm. that some of us have never, ever, ever shared yeah. with nobody. You dig? Nobody. I, and I ain't here to, to to reveal what have happened to me, but I want to listen to what Minister Michael was getting ready to say. Mm-hmm. And then I want to come back to where does this go? Is, are, are we trying to see the man yeah, go back to jail? Saying. Do they want him to commit mean, suicide? To well, he not back to jail, jail, where, you know, they almost put him in prison mm-hmm. in terms of image, oh. in terms of of, 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 you know, you could be uh, uh, in prison with just the media, like you could be guilty and all of that without even walking through those doors when they finish with you. But Minister Michael, go ahead. No, I just want to go back to my original comments. Uh, first of all, um, anybody preying on young women deserves justice mm-hmm. because if you pray on my underage daughter right right whether you were my father That's or right. whoever you are mm-hmm. you're going to get justice one way or the other so now having said that what we don't do as a population of people especially black people is we don't look at the bigger picture the media White folks are skilled at fabricating such a rich, elaborate narrative based upon 10% truth, 90% a lie, and make it so believable to our minds because we're such gullible, emotional people that they have a way. They, I, I watched the media turn black people against LeBron James because Me LeBron too. James Me broke too. the system. If we go down the line from Marcus Garvey to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to, to Paul Robeson to Frederick Douglass, we can come on down all the way down to Dr. Martin Luther King. Come on down the line of any black man in particular who had influence white people fear you man they don't care whether or not you saying a black power or step in the name of love Mm. if if you offend the wrong white person and in truth from the political side what is happening to r kelly is at the behest of a white man named jim dirigatis who is a music critic who was offended who I know too took a personal offense from Robert and has made it his personal mission and crusade to destroy R Kelly not only his career but to decimate him as a human being mm-hmm. and so you have uh these uh uh uh, uh, uh television studios mm-hmm. who have made themselves mm-hmm. complicit in monsterizing, uh, monsterizing another black man, uh, another significant young black man. So now, th- now that's 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 the big frame mm-hmm. situation that that we have to always see when white people vilify somebody. There's there's we have a responsibility to remember who's doing the vilifying and keep that in the context of our assessment of the truth or falsity of what they're saying about a person. So, so the hypocrisy that is practiced, Mm -hmm. not only by white people, but by black people is the part that's hard for me to swallow Mm -hmm. because I watch black women groom their daughters to be sex objects Mm -hmm. at five years old, Mm -hmm. six years old. 
And then when they're teenagers, now you want them mm -hmm. to walk out the house like a grown woman. Mm -hmm. You painting their nails. You you wow. doing their hair. You 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 putting them in naked clothes, sending them to school. Mm -hmm. You they got on leggings and spandex, and the, you ain't teaching them no, nothing about being wow. a virtuous or dignified. You you letting the little boy come over and spend the night. You let her leave the house and go with the little boy somewhere where you don't know where they are and what they doing. I, I I watch parents who set their children up to be prey. But now many of us as parents, we are so offended by something that was put on television that we take as the gospel truth. Let me say this though. What I think the what I think the documentary a good purpose that the a uh, good uh something that the documentary is what the documentary is good for it's good for us to have a conversation about um about uh, uh uh women and about sexual violation about um about that's right even even about just the way our practices right because when you look at the parents the one parent you say me and my daughter and my wife were at a concert my daughter's 21 Robert is one of my best friends. She's never been to an R. Kelly concert. My daughter, my daughter's never been to an R. Kelly concert. I wouldn't take her to that. My daughter is, uh, my daughter is a broadcast journalism major. I would never say, hey, go go with Rob and do a story on him and follow him around so you could get your career up. I wouldn't do it. We have to take a whole, we have to take the whole picture. First of all. I mean, you know, the documentary started off showing about Rob's personal life and that he was molesting and things like that. He has a different orientation towards sex because that's what people. I, I guess what that's I'm right. trying to say is that Rob was created by by us, by the people, by the people. So what we do is, and this is like I looked at my, you know, I I always kind of used to have these talks with myself, and Rob and I used to have these talks like when Michael Jackson, um was when Whitney died, we talked on the phone, you know, I was crying over Whitney, Rob was crying over Whitney, Rob was in Africa when Michael Jackson died, we texted back and forth. I always said, where are they where are their friends? Where are the people who know them in other ways for because I consider those kind of self inflicted um I I consider those uh, uh kind of suicides. Right. Where you could see this spiraling out of control. You can see that the people are sending them. It's like a suicide murder. The people are all laughing at Whitney's drug abuse. And all this. And I'm thinking that's a human being. Whitney, Whitney Houston made my life rich. Whitney Houston sang songs that. But it's okay. Dr. Dr. Delaney, it's called it's cult right. of personality. Yeah. And so yeah. and so what we do uh, okay. with talented people is we construct the cults of personality. And the cult of personality uh, it, 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 it frequently builds slowly over time where we get we, we have a, a you usually people who are very talented are also very lonely. Usually people who are very gifted find themselves in dark spaces and dark places. And the way that they the way they keep their sanity is through their gift. But the gift attracts opportunists. The gift attracts other needy people. And those opportunists and those needy people feed your ego. Right. And so you start yep. that becomes a part of your right. reciprocal gratification. Yep. So what you find around talented, powerful people is a lot of yes men, a lot of people who shine them on, a lot yep. of people who pat them on the back, a lot of people who don't tell them when there's a a, 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 a crumb on their face from the pizza they just ate or, mm -hmm. or, or there's a hair out of place or they don't, that outfit don't look good or, right. or or you shouldn't have did that to that person because they it's 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 uh it becomes a a a a a, a circle a, 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 a inverted uh, a situation where we're feeding off of each other and so the talent the main principle uh if they are not grounded spiritually and balanced spiritually, then they become dependent upon people feeding their ego. And right. so they will slowly over time push people out who don't feed their ego. The right. person that goes against the grain, they they won't have that person around them on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. They may they may keep them within arm's reach, but they won't have them around all the time because now 
I have such a deep need and my need is met by these opportunists and these these other needy people feeding my ego that now I can't see myself. Mm. And so whatever I like, they like and they want me to have more of what I like. Mm -hmm. And so they whatever that is, if it's alcohol, if it's cocaine, if it's heroin, yeah. what you know, if it's pills or whatever it is. They go get it for me. Right. right. Be because they need me and I need them and they're feeding my ego. And so it becomes a self a, pa a path of self destruction if something mm -hmm. or someone uh, is not able to intervene. So when you look at somebody like mm -hmm. uh, Robert, mm -hmm. all you got to do is dissect his inner circle and you can you you be able to tell. Well, listen to this. Can and we the, give what, out let the me number say, before you make that statement? Anybody that wants to call in and you have something to say, a comment, or et cetera, 708-223-8953. That's 708-223-8953. If you want to so, have a question or comments re regarding this subject <laughs> and you want to talk to so Doc. Let me, so let me say this. Uh, in, the, in the documentary, at one point, they had this guy who was blacked out. Or woman, whoever, and the individual blacked out, and the voice was this guy. And that that individual said, "No, no, he would when when it came time to what's in the media or what people are saying. Well, no, we wouldn't tell them the truth. What? What? I mean, it's so. Listen, listen. Here's what I'm saying. So as uh, I was having a conversation with one woman, and she was saying, like I said, whatever anybody did any in any of that world, then. R. Kelly is guilty for it. He's just guilty. Like, you now I'm saying, so he just dropped out the sky guilty. Nobody contributed to that. He's just guilty of everything. Let's take that. Let's say Rob is just a unique thing that controlled everything by himself, and he just got the power by himself, and we nailed him to the cross and burned him, and in in his ashes are there. Are we okay now without dealing with how other people contributed to that? Are we going to be okay, or is it going to be the next person next week? Or, if to be honest, if we open our eyes right now, is it all these other people right now? When we talk about the life, it cracks me up how everybody, this is this bullying, uh, what my son calls the media monster. So you get the bullying. So you can't, so now you got to make chance, apologize. Why you do a song with him? Because he does music. What is that? That's why he did a song with him. Then you got, you buddy could do a song. Can he do a song with Jay-Z? Can he do a song with uh, 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 Puffy? Can he do, what I'm trying to say is, are y'all listening to Marvin Gaye? Are y'all listening to Prince? Do you know the history of them with the young ladies? It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. So, I, and, and, and for me, I always knew Rob's life was going to serve a, a, big, a big purpose. Here it get bigger and bigger. I've never seen nothing like that on TV. This dude gets six hours worth of TV on one side to talk about his badness. Now, six me... hours. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is, so it must be a greater purpose that God has for this. So let's let's dig out all the cancer of the world, of other of, 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 of black people's uh, sexual behaviors. Let's dig them all out. Let's start by going back and digging up Marvin Gaye, who got with his his friend's daughter, who was 15. Let's go dig up Prince. Turn, take, the, turn, call, take all that off the radio. No, but Prince, it's bigger than hold that, on. Though. Let's get them all off the radio. It's, let's it's, do it's, all of that. And currently that. today, Puffy's kids, what all of them. Let's get them all off. No, it's bigger than that. Because I'm, the truth, I'm for real. A, it's a real here's thing. The truth. Here's the with. truth yeah. about mm -hmm. manhood. Mm -hmm. Men generally like younger women. Period. Now, that... I'm qualifying that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that men want underage women. Right. I'm saying that men in our society, I don't know about other societies, but it's not uncommon for an older man to be attracted to younger women. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because men feel as though they can control a younger woman, mm -hmm. help shape and mold her attitude and perspectives, <clears throat> and meet a different or less of a certain type of resistance than dealing with maybe a woman closer to his generation or his age. Uh -huh. So Or in, take advantage. Or take, take advantage. advantage, right. So, so we, it, uh, what I'm saying is that this is a nuanced, thing that we have to unpack about the behaviors of men, men. toward women yeah. atti our attitudes about women, women right. and sex yes. that we've inherited this Eurocentric tainted 
perspective right. that we have as black men about That's our horrible. women. I think this right? is the time. Right. Dig it all out. And, Dig and, it all and, out. And, 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 then, and then the last point, mm -hmm. when you mentioned that sister saying it's all R, R. Kelly's fault, mm -hmm. what to me, I heard the vilification of black men because for 50 years, the black man is a dog. The black man ain't this. The black black men ain't that. Men ain't this. It's been a demonization, especially of black men in a general sense in our community. And it's been politically incorrect to view men as anything other than being the sole entity responsible That's right. for all of the ills in relationship. Let me, say that. Let me add this one point. So Meek Mill yeah. got a new song. I just saw, I'm, uh, now all the celebrities just jumping out the woodwork. He's horrible. The the the, the guy, the, uh, the old football guy, he should go to jail and then kill himself. And then Meek Mill said, I said, I, now I just had to listen to Meek Mill last semester because my class covered his new CD, his new album. And on the, it was one song where girls say, the girl on the song say, should I sleep with him or should I help him or whatever. Whatever. And then the other girls say, do we got money? Blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So what are we going to do now? Don't we mean we retarded. We, we, we are, we are schizo. Are we with this. it or we not with it? I we need to get it out. Them. Meek Mill shouldn't, that he Look, shouldn't dare say something. And we I got to say this about celebrities, so-called celebrities. I, if you feel that way, I get it. But it's been a bunch of niggas and Negroes and punks and cowards who stood with the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan, a good man, Keith Ellison, even Sharpton didn't want to even sit by him at Aretha Franklin's funeral. I don't give a damn about everybody throwing somebody under the bus during tough time. And by no stretch of the imagination at all are we justifying no. the behavior no. of R. Kelly. Not at all. Mm -mm. But we as black people, as, as a whole, we are so hypocritical. And, and I say that you all really do need to go and be audited and let somebody go back and comb your life. And all of us would be on this, on this program and in that audience crying. Every last one of us. If we reveal what has gone on in our lives and our mother's life and our grandparents' life and their grandparents' life, it's been a sickness. It's been a darkness in the black community. And what happened to us? But at the end of the day, you know, when I hear people automatically, you make me want to throw up. When you say, I want, it's almost like some people saying, I want to give Ed Burke the money back. I want to, I, I right. regret doing a song. How stupid are you? What about the good? And even if it's a little good in the person. But well, anyway, then, we got a, a three minutes. This is uh, all yours, okay. Kim. Okay. The three minutes. Folks, thank you all for tuning in. Uh -oh. Kim, Dr. Yeah, Kim yeah. will close us out with uh -oh. whatever she's saying. Uh-oh. So let me say, uh, we got three minutes. You sure? Oh, oh, okay. So, so We're let me do say. Part two. So, so let me say this. Let me say that I the problem with this is is exactly what I'm feeling now. If if I if you we talk about one side and we don't talk about bad, then it for me it feels like hold on, wait a minute. It's this side too. You know what I'm saying? We I just talk to the bad. I want to talk about the bad. I want to talk about this too. I think because the bad is being so well covered Shit, right is. now that I just wanted to toss in because I, I, like I said, I prepared for this watching Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. I used to say, I, you know, I'm from, I'm from the South side. When it's my friend turn, I'm going to have something to say. I don't have no contrary to, to that. I understand what you're saying. Everybody got dark secrets. I don't have, I don't have nothing. I'm, nothing sexually I'm ashamed of. I don't do it. And I try to teach my daughter, don't do it. So you won't. So when you have to live it again, you'll be okay with it. I don't have no secrets. I've never been victimized. And for the record, Rob did nothing bad to me, never victimized me. In fact, he built me up. He helped me to be better. That's what, that's what I understand. That's what, that's how I know him. So when, as I'm watching the women, they were saying that, but then there's another part they got to later that I, that I didn't meet. That's what, that's, that's all I'm saying. There's another part that I didn't, that I don't know. And so where do we go from here? Can I, uh, you know, and all these people got talk, a lot of, a lot of talk, a lot of talk. Who's saying what they're going to do. Who's going to help women to understand that we don't, we don't use ourselves in that way. 
Who's going to help? What what men are going to help men understand that even if somebody chase you down, push you in the closet, you don't you don't get with her. You gotta you gotta have some kind of way to get you know to push off of. It. It's not worth it. So who's going to do those that kind of teaching to help us to solve the real problem? Who's going to find the contradictions in the music? Who's going to find the contradictions in our movies and all that we do so that we can gut it out for real and fix it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. Share this conversation. Go back and study the words that God inspired Minister Michael, our beloved sister, doctor, professor, author, man, Kim Delaney. Thank you so very and much. And I should finally say at the end, I'm going to say right here what I know of Rob, that I'm going to have a conversation with Rob again and just ask him and reasonably explain to him that he should send them people home, send everybody home. I bet All you the know, workers, everybody. I bet Meeks ain't going to invite him back over to his a, church go, no go more. Mm-hmm. And hey. send everybody, everybody But he ain't going to invite him back over to the house of hopeness. No more. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, you Almighty have, God, Creator, you and help us all, and um, and help our community as a whole. This is and the New better, Black Leadership Coalition. Peace and love.